Solving General Chemistry Problems Thermodynamics Consider this simple work problem. A piston is filled with an ideal gas so as to have a volume of 1 liter and an internal pressure of 10 bar. The piston is allowed to expand isothermally against an external pressure of 5 bar until it achieves equilibrium. What is the work associated with this process? Two key phrases in the question are that it is an ideal gas and that we are forcing it to be isothermal. This means that any changes in internal energy arising from work are counterbalanced by the equal and opposite flow of energy in the form of heat. Equilibrium will be achieved when the internal pressure matches the external pressure. Because it is isothermal, we are allowed to use P1V1 equals P2V2 to find pressures or volumes as needed. So from that we find the final volume to be 2 liters. Now this makes sense. The pressure is cut in half, so the volume must be doubled. The change in volume is 1 liter. Pressure volume work is defined by the equation W equals minus P external delta V. Substitute in, convert to joules, and find that 500 joules of work was done. The negative sign means that the system did work on the surroundings. It used 500 joules of its internal energy to do that work. Remember, however, that because we are forcing this to be isothermal, the exact same amount of energy must enter the system in the form of heat, so that overall the internal energy doesn't change. Now consider this variation of the problem. We will expand in two steps. The start and the end conditions will be the same, but there's an intermediate step. So initial volume of 1 liter and an internal pressure of 10 bar, the piston expands isothermally against an external pressure of 7.5 bar until it reaches equilibrium. Then the external pressure is exchanged to 5 bar and it expands the rest of the way. What is the work associated with this process? Is it different from the first process? The first step stops at 1.33 liters of volume, so the volume changes by 0.33 liters. The second step goes to the same endpoint as before. The volume change for this step is 0.67 liters. Work calculations give us minus 2.48 joules for the first step and minus 335 joules for the second step. Overall, the work done by the system is minus 583 joules. Recall that minus 500 joules of work was done when we did this in, in the first in the one-step process. Here we have two processes that start and end at the same place, but do not have the same work done when traversing the two paths. Your physics courses have taught you that work is force times distance, W equals F times X. We can write it in a differential form as dW is equal to F dx. The integral form of this expression reveals an important aspect of work. Work is the integral of F dx from position x1 to position x2. This is a line integral. The path taken to get from the start to the finish could be any of an infinite number of paths. We can specify it for a path we can call C. As well, F may be varying throughout the path so that it is also part of the definition of C. Now, a bit of an aside. This is actually a vector relationship. The orientation of the force vector to the displacement vector makes a big difference. For example, when you push a car from behind, it moves forward the same direction you are pushing. You are performing work. This is work against the force of friction, but work nonetheless. The force and the motion are in the same direction. However, if you push really hard on the side door of the car, it doesn't go anywhere. And while you might be tiring yourself out, you're not accomplishing any work. Lots of F, but no X. But again, in our work in general chemistry, this will not need to be considered, so the scalar relationship as shown here meets our needs. Because this is a line integral, the work done depends upon the path taken, depending both on a variation in displacement, also depending on a variation in force. We say that work is a path-dependent variable. A similar analysis would reveal that heat is also path-dependent. The idea of a path-dependent variable is in contrast with other properties of thermodynamic systems, such as enthalpy, entropy, or Gibbs energy, which are state functions, and their changes are independent of the path taken. They only depend upon the starting state and the ending state. Natural gas is mostly made up of methane, about 85% or more. The combustion of methane, which is its reaction with oxygen, is an excellent way to release energy. The fraction of that energy that ends up as heat, and the rest as work, depends strongly on the path taken. Different devices provide different paths. You could burn it in the gas fireplace in your home and most of the energy will show up as heat. 
but you could also burn it in an internal combustion engine to power your car, and you would get about 25% of the energy showing up as work. You could burn it in a gas turbine power plant and get about 35% as work. You could burn it in a solid oxide fuel cell and get about 60% of the energy as work. In all cases, the state functions changed by the same amount, but the fractionation between heat and work was different. This is what is meant by their being labeled path-dependent variables. The model we use in chemistry to explore pressure volume work is the cylindrical piston. The piston has a specific cross-sectional area A, and we consider it to be able to move without friction. The movable disk is seen to be massless, but we can imagine placing masses on it as a means of controlling the external pressure. The equation for work, when, when force is constant and directed in the same direction as the motion, is dW is equal to fdx. If we multiply uh, numerator and denominator by the piston area A, we have dW is equal to f divided by A times A times dx. A force spread over an area is a pressure. f over A is equal to p. And the area times the infinitesimal distance dx is the infinitesimal volume change dv. So dw equals fdx is equal to pdv. Pressure times a volume change is equivalent to a force times a distance change. When the pressure is constant and we change the volume from v1 to v2 so that v2 minus v1 is equal to delta v, then the work done is w is equal to p delta v. This is looking at things from the perspective of the surroundings. Notice above where the force is coming from. To see about work from the system's perspective, we add the negative sign. This is part of our convention for the first law of thermodynamics being delta U is equal to Q plus W and is the equation we use in chemistry. Here's another couple of problems for you to consider. The piston is arranged so as to occupy a volume one liter. The external pressure is adjusted to be 0.1 bar. The piston is released and it expands to a volume of five liters. So we stop it at 5 liters by engaging the appropriate latch on the cylinder. What is the work involved? Well, delta V is 5 minus 1 or 4 liters. Work is minus P external delta V minus 0.1 bar times 4 liters minus 0.4 liter bar or minus 40 joules. Because the work is negative, the system has used up 40 joules of its internal energy in order to perform 40 joules of work on the surroundings. It has pushed back the 0.1 bar of external pressure so the system can occupy an additional 4 liters. It has increased its volume, but at the expense of its internal energy. Another problem. Again, the piston is arranged to occupy a volume of 1 liter. External pressure is adjusted to be 0 bar, that is, it's a vacuum outside the piston. When the piston is released, it is again allowed to expand to 5 liters. The latch stops it at the same position as before. What is the work involved? Delta V is again 4 liters as the motion is the same as above. The work, however, is minus P external delta V minus 0 times 4 liters or 0 liter bars, 0 joules. No work is done when a system expands into a vacuum.